In this video, you'll discover the top inflammatory foods. Hey, it's Dr. Zorowski, and if you're new to the channel, it's a pleasure to have you here. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification. Join our notification community so that I can help you excel your health and your life. In this video, we're talking about inflammatory foods or foods that are driving inflammation in the body. You know, this is a really important topic because when we look at heart disease, diabetes, and also cancer, it all starts with a chronic inflammatory issue that has gone systemic. Now, here's the deal. When I talk about inflammation, I'm not talking about a swollen knee or a swollen elbow. I'm talking about inflammation at a cellular level that is destroying your health. And so there's some different foods and ingredients out there that you need to make sure you're avoiding if you want to keep inflammation down in your body. Now, the first one on our list here is hydrogenated oils. Hydrogenated oils is going to be like corn oil, soybean oil, the uh, canola oil, peanut oil. And as a result, it's driving an omega-6 dominance problem in the body but it's also these bad fats are attaching to the cell and driving inflammation. So we want to avoid hydrogenated oils at all costs. The next big one here is trans fats. We want to avoid trans fats because they're in many of the different packaged foods that people are buying. So we want to make sure that we're avoiding low quality packaged convenience foods because they're likely going to contain hydrogenated oils or trans fats. Now fried foods is a big one because when you go to your favorite restaurant, there's a good chance that your food is being fried in hydrogenated oil that once again is driving that omega-6 dominance problem. But the other issue with that is when you take these different oils, they are not heat stable. So when you heat them up, they become denatured. And as a result of that, they drive that inflammation. So if we're going to eat fried foods, then we want to make sure that we're making the fried foods ourselves with a heat stable oil like coconut oil. Next on our list here is grain-fed meats. So if we're getting grain-fed meats, these are the same meats that are very high in omega-6. It causes an omega-6 dominance issue in the body. This is why so many people, when they start consuming omega-3s, they start feeling so much better because they are so omega-6 dominant that that omega-3 boosting it in the body, it balances out those ratios and essentially they feel a lot better for it. So we want to stick to grass-fed meats whenever possible here. Now the next big one is refined carbohydrates. Okay, So if you're consuming refined carbohydrates, this is going to skyrocket the blood sugar in your body. And essentially we know that high amounts of sugar is going to cause inflammation. And so we want to stay away from your different pastas, your different breads out there, and make sure that we're avoiding refined carbohydrates just as much as we avoid sugar because is essentially these carbohydrates are going to turn to sugar in the body. If we are going to consume carbohydrates, let's consume better quality carbohydrates like a sweet potato, for instance. But in general, we want to have low carbohydrate, a low carbohydrate diet, and we also want to always make sure that we're not consuming refined carbohydrates. Next year on our list is monosodium glutamate. So traditionally, MSG is thought to be found in Chinese food, but MSG is found in all foods. Many of your favorite fast food restaurants, I can guarantee, have MSG in the food. And as a matter of fact, many of your favorite packaged convenience foods, even your healthy ones at the store, likely have MSG in them as well. So look at those ingredients, look at the label, and then be aware of the different fast food restaurants out there because most of them are putting MSG in the food in order to enhance the flavor. Next one here is preservatives. This one's pretty obvious, but we need to make sure that we're avoiding preservatives that is found in all the convenience packaged foods. Avoid those at all costs, and even different healthy foods out there have preservatives in them that are gonna drive inflammation. We also wanna make sure that we're avoiding the different dyes in foods, so like the red and yellow coloring, because those different dyes are also going to drive inflammation in the body, so avoid those, because once again, even healthy foods typically have this in it. I can't tell you how many times people People go and they buy my kids some sort of snack, some healthy snack, and it's loaded with preservatives and dyes and food coloring, so watch out for that. And then last on our list here is sugar. So if you're consuming any type of sugar, then you want to make sure that you cut down on it in a, in a huge way because sugar drives inflammation in the body. And as a matter of fact, when we look at sugar, it's the main fuel source for cancerous cells in the body. So if we want to kill cancer in the body, certainly make sure that you're avoiding sugar. Now, sugar comes in so many different names and forms, and we want to make sure that when we look at these different ingredient labels, we're looking for anything that ends in O's, and if it has a whole bunch of ingredients ending and O's, we certainly want to avoid it. So make sure that these inflammatory foods are not part of your regular diet and certainly make sure that you take them out of your diet at all costs. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends because I'm sure that they're consuming a lot of inflammatory foods. If you have any questions, post it in the comments section below and then check out my other videos that will help you improve your health. I'll see you in the next video.